As the President himself has said, mistakes were made. Mistakes in selling arms to Iran, allowing the transaction to become focused on releasing American hostages, diverting funds from the arms sale to support for the Contras, misleading the Congress about the extent of NSC staff involvement with the Contras, delaying notification of anyone in Congress of the transactions until after the story broke in Lebanese newspapers, and tolerating a decision-making process within the upper reaches of the administration that lacked integrity and accountability for key elements of the process. Um, and, of course, with respect to the Contra program, uh, the administration's policy was well known of support for the Contras. Uh, that program had gone forward prior to the adoption of the Bolin Amendment and its various versions and, and is obviously the policy of the United States government today to support the Contras. Yes, sir. It takes a strong, confident leader to subject himself and his administration to the very thorough nature of this congressional investigation. And we are here today concluding the public phase of our hearings on time, in large part because of the cooperation of the President and his administration. President Reagan has enjoyed many successes during his more than six years in office. Clearly, this was not one of them. Yesterday, uh, the distinguished senator from Oklahoma spent a lot of time uh, on the assertion that somehow you had usurped U.S. Uh, foreign policy authority, that you had, uh, uh, in effect, taken under yourself the power to determine what U.S. foreign policy was and usurped the authority of the President, the Secretary of State, the members of the National Security Council. And uh, we got a lot of coverage uh, out of those comments yesterday. And I'd like to go back over a little bit of that ground, if I might, just briefly with you. Because the Senate. Do you think that the U.S. or U.N. forces should have moved into Baghdad? No. Why not? Because if we'd gone to Baghdad, we would have been all alone. There wouldn't have been anybody else with us. It would have been a U.S. occupation of Iraq. None of the Arab forces that were willing to fight with us in Kuwait were willing to invade Iraq. Uh, once you got to Iraq and took it over and took down Saddam Hussein's government, then what are you going to put in its place? How many additional dead Americans is Saddam worth? And our judgment was uh, not very many, and I think we got it right. Well, let me tell you about Halliburton, the company I ran. I'm very proud of uh, what I did at Halliburton. Uh, the people of uh, Halliburton are very proud of what they've accomplished. And uh, I, frankly, uh, don't feel any need to apologize for the way I've spent my time over the last five years as the CEO and chairman of a major American corporation. You've heard a lot about Halliburton lately. Criticism is okay. We can take it. Criticism is not failure. Our employees are doing a great job rebuilding Iraq. Will things go wrong? Sure they will. It's a war zone. We're serving the troops because of what we know.